vacuum loading. The vehicle uses helium gas as a pressurant in the fuel and LOX tanks. As the Merlin engine pumps pull RP-1 and LOX out of the tanks, we fill that empty volume, known as the ullage, with helium that's heated up by the engines. Heating the helium helps expand it to fill the propellant tanks. And to make sure that startup goes well, we also perform what's called engine chill. Uh, right about now at T minus seven minutes, we're flowing a small amount of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the nine Merlin engine turbo pumps. We do this to avoid any thermal shock to the system when the full flow of super chilled locks hits the prop system. The vehicle is healthy and we're currently tracking no issues. The range is green to support. And as for weather, beautiful shot there of uh, our launch site. It's a gorgeous day in Florida. We were predicted 70% favorable conditions for launch. Main concerns being liftoff winds and cumulus clouds around the launch site, uh, as well as recovery zone winds. But everything is looking in bounds for now. So all systems continue to be go for a liftoff at 6.56 PM Eastern time. If for some reason we don't get to launch today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 6.34 p.m. Eastern. Complete. Today, more than 18 million Americans live in areas without access to high-speed internet. For many communities that historically have had poor or non-existent connections to internet, the impacts of the current pandemic made day-to-day -day life even more challenging. One such community that has been underserved are the residents of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. This week, the city announced that it's participating in our beta program by offering 50 rural homes and businesses Starlink connectivity. These users will now be able to access high-speed internet for work-related purposes, accessing healthcare remotely, and receiving an online edu education. Currently, our Starlink beta service is available in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Western Germany, the South Island in New Zealand, Austria, and France. And as of this week, we are excited to announce that we are now serving parts of the Netherlands. As we continue to grow our Starlink beta program and customer base, we are also building and expanding our infrastructure. Earlier this week, we announced that SpaceX will be locating our Starlink ground stations within Google Cloud data center properties in order to deliver secure and high-speed internet connectivity for our users. Locating ground, sta ground stations at data centers will significantly improve latency as data can go from the user terminal to the server without touching the internet. To learn more about Starlink or to find out if service is available in your area, head on over to Starlink.com. We're currently at T minus four minutes and 40 seconds from liftoff and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The next visual milestone will be retraction of the transporter erector or TE. That's the white painted structure that you see there next to the vehicle. As the name indicates, that's what we use to transport the vehicle from the hangar to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. First, we'll see the TE clamps open. Uh, that should be coming up in just a few seconds. Uh, and then the TE will begin to retract away from the rocket slightly. At T0, the hydraulics pull the TE further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And if you look closely, you can see those clamps beginning to open now. The TE provides liquids, gases, electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with a million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The super chilled liquid oxygen is our propellant oxidizer and is the source of the white clouds that we can start to see forming around Falcon 9. Uh, that happens when the warm, humid Florida air comes into contact with the cold liquid oxygen. Uh, the oxygen heats up and then turns into the white gas clouds that we can start to see. The first stage will be finishing prop loading here in about 15 seconds at T minus three minutes. And the second stage wrap, wraps up its prop load at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, we'll hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Then just inside T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin M1D engines. We use TTEB as our ignition fluid. When it mixes with oxygen, it burns a bright green colored flame, so be sure to watch out for that. We then allow the stage fuel- Stage one lock load is complete. All right, and there we heard the call out that stage one lock load is complete. Stage two continues to, top, uh, continues to load its locks. Um, as I was saying, after uh, we use TTEB to ignite the Merlin engines, we then allow 
full flow of the fuel into the thrust chambers, uh, and then the engine comes up to power for liftoff at T0. At this point, the Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The F9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather continues to look gorgeous. And the range has cleared the surrounding ground, water, and airspace and are green for launch just two minutes from now. Stage two locks load is complete. All right, there we heard the call out that stage two locks load is complete. This means that Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with all propellants on both stages. If you look at the shadow of the rocket there on the pad, we can see some, uh, the shadow of the white clouds that are forming around the pad. Like I mentioned before, that's just the liquid oxygen vaporizing with the ambient air. Now that locks load is complete and though that, that propellant line is blocked off to the vehicle, that leftover locks uh, in the lines basically turn into gas and form the white clouds that we see. Flight computers in startup. All right, there we heard the call out that flight computers are in startup. This means that the autonomous flight computer has taken over the launch countdown. And at this point, both first and second stage are beginning to pressurize for launch. Falcon 9, Starlink LDs, go for launch. All right, there we heard our launch director give the final 30 seconds. There we heard the launch director give our final go for launch. And at this point in time, all systems are go. Let's listen in to the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our stack of Starlink satellites and two ride shares hey, into my space. Seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And liftoff. Falcon 9 is pitching downrange. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from the historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Nominal Space Center, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites and two ride shares into orbit. We throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during vehicle supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during ascent, so slowing the vehicle down helps during that short period. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out that we reached max Q. In about a minute, we're gonna have three events happening back to back. First will be the main, will be main engine cutoff, or as you'll hear it called out, Miko. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name suggests, this is where the first stage separates from the second stage, with stage one starting to make its way back to Earth for landing on our Started. While stage two continues its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel the second stage along with the Starlink and two rideshare satellites into orbit. So just a few seconds ago, we heard the call out that MVAC chill has begun. That's the same thing as what I described prior to liftoff for the M1D engines. We flow a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pump of the MVAC engine, uh, helping to prepare the prop system for that super cold fluid to flow through.
So there we can see that the engine Stage separation confirmed. All right, so on the left-hand side of your screen, we got the I'm first stage mission. and the second, on the right-hand side, the second stage, and there we heard call out and back ignition. We can see that nozzle begin to develop a lovely orange glow as Earth rotates in the background. And on the left-hand side, we got first stage deploying the grid fins in preparation for the drone ship landing. In just a few seconds, we're gonna have fairing deploy Love that view of MVAC. And there's our first view inside fairing the payload fairing. Uh, there we have visual and uh, call out there that fairing separation has occurred. As a reminder, we will be attempting to recover those fairing halves today with our recovery ship, Sheila Bordelon. And of course, we're gonna be recovering the first stage with our drone ship, utilizing a view for today's recovery attempt. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to wake, make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. We do this at the last minute to conserve as much fuel as possible. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A. On the right side of your screen, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 Stage 2 as it delivers our Starlink and rideshare payloads to orbit. On the left, Stage 1 is cruising back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, in the Atlantic Ocean. Our Starlink satellites are in LEO, or low Earth orbit, at around 550 Both kilometers. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Most satellites are around 36,000 kilometers in altitude at geo or geostationary orbit. When the satellites are further from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and the satellite, also known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities like video calls and online gaming. about a minute out here from entry burn. On the left hand, see the first stage as it cruises in. Uh, Falcon 9 is equipped uh, with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. Uh, this use, it, the, grid, the stage uses nothing but the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. Earth. They orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during descent. Occasionally, you'll also see some white puffs. These are nitrogen gas bursts for attitude adjustment and control. Now we're about 20 seconds out from entry burn. As a reminder, this is a three engine burn that is meant to slow the first stage as it hits the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn is started. And stage one entry burn shut down. And we just had a confirmation of stage one entry burn cut off. Now we're about 60 seconds away from landing. And at this point, the vehicle is traveling around 900 miles per hour. This really puts the deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we will have slowed from twice the speed of a jet all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. There are a couple of the events scheduled to, to happen in close proximity here. Stage one landing burn will begin and will finish its burn in about 25 seconds. And then stage two, two up in space will stop firing about 50 second, 15 seconds later, at which point we'll enter the first coast period. So prepare for that in about 45 seconds. Stage one is transonic. 
got a great view of both the first stage re-entering into the Atlantic and stage two as it continues on a nominal orbit. Stage one landing burn has started. Got a start of stage one. Turn As a ends. reminder, we may lose coverage of the vehicle as it attempts to land on the drone ship. Landing legs have deployed. Landing leg deployed. Stage two FTS. On the left hand side of the screen, got a beautiful view of a successful landing. This marks our 84th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and the sixth recovery of this particular booster. Seco. And there we had second engine cutoff one or Seco one. Waiting for a confirmation of good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. And there the team confirmed good orbit. Now, stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 45 minutes or so. While that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. We'll see you back here at T plus 54 minutes for a second stage relight and the deployment of, of our two ride chairs on board today.